Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes here, Hayes's World of Math, helping you learn everything that you need to be learning. So we're talking AP stats, we're talking confidence intervals, um, and we're going to do a new lesson that I haven't done before. Um, it's new from Statsmedic and Skew the Script. It's all about the immigration debate from a couple years ago, and I thought it would be worthwhile to go through. So jumping into things, jumping into things. Um, if you remember back in October of 2018, there was this caravan coming from Central America up through um, all the countries there and up through Mexico, with the destination being the U.S. And so some of them, this goes through and talks about how liberal-leaning news sources like MSNBC mostly displayed sympathetic views of women and children, while things like Fox News and other outlets that leaned more conservative tended to show um, a bunch of men in their pictures um, to helpfully evoke fear, need for security, things like that. So the real question then becomes, since you can't always trust either side of the media, what was the real story? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look um, at this using some immigration um, data coming from Europe since um, I think it says here that actually it's further down that Spain actually does a fairly good job in terms of keeping the data on their immigrant population. So we're going to go through and do something called a one sample Z interval. And we're going to talk through, and today we're going to formalize everything, all the steps you need to do, all the checks you have to do, and all that other stuff so you can get this type of question perfect on your AP exam. So down through here, they give you some of the background here in terms of the deb debate for gender of immigrants. So you can see right here some of the quotes of some of the things that we're saying on some of the more conservative sides of things. And so what we ended up doing down here is that the original situation that if you were in the classroom, we would have a big jar full of beads. There would be orange and blue. And then what would end up happening is the orange beads would end up representing males out of the immigrant population who are coming and that who were coming into a country, in this case, Spain, and also blue beads representing non-males, meaning women and children. Okay. So <clears throat> the situation here was you would end up going through and the class would go through and pick out at this point 150 people, let's say. And so in this case, we count how many there were orange because, again, remember, success, failure. Success is what you're looking for. Failure is what you're not looking for. And in this case, let's say we had 72 of them were male. So you're going to calculate out that proportion. The proportion, again, 72 out of 150 is equal to 0 0.48. And again, if you're copying my notes from below, or I shouldn't say copying, if you took my notes from below, again, I apologize for the equation not coming through as nicely as it should. So now we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval. Remember, the confidence interval is where we believe the true proportion is being captured um, to estimate the proportion of immigrants who are male. So in this case here, the first thing we're going to do is we need to state what we're doing um, and what we're trying to do. So like in this case here, we're going to state that P is the true proportion of all immigrants in Madrid who are male. And the confidence level is going to be 95%. The next step is going to be to plan. And so to plan this, we're going to identify what we're going to do and what method. And then we're going to have to make sure that those conditions are met so it's okay for us to use that method. So in this case here, we're going to do a one sample Z interval for P. Okay, we don't have to say confidence interval. We're just saying one sample Z interval. Um, we are going to get into different types. We'll have two samples and we're going to have a different type of variable for here. Okay, and then down over here, that means that if we're going to do a Z interval, the conditions that we need here are, is it random? Do we have 10%? And do we have large counts? This is what we talked about in the last video. So is it random? The 150 immigrants, immigrants were randomly selected. 10%. 150 is definitely less than or equal to one-tenth of the thousands of immigrants that had moved into Madrid at that point. And large counts, you're going to go 50 times 48%. So 72 is bigger than 10. And then 50 times the not p-value, 78. And that's definitely bigger than 10. Now remember why we do this. Okay, this first one here is so that we can generalize to all the immigrants in Madrid. And we talked about that back when we were talking about designing studies. You want to be able to extend it to the population, you have to be able to say that it's totally random. 
right? The 10% here, okay, is saying, so the sampling without replacement is okay. Because again, remember, as long as you're not taking over 10%, we don't have to worry about putting things back in the pool. And then the last one is going to allow us to use the sample. To, we're going to say that we can, it's approximately normal. So here, it allows us to say the sampling distribution. Always good to use vocabulary. P hat is approximately normal. All right. Just making sure I'm not, the, it's not bleeding through to the my desk. All right. So we stated what we're going to do. So again, four steps. We stated what we're going to do. We want this parameter here. This is my confidence level. We planned it. We said we're going to do a confidence interval, a one sample Z interval for proportions. And then we checked the three conditions. So we had it being random. We hit the 10% rule so that we can make sure we don't have to worry about replacements. We hit large counts to say that we can pretend or we can treat it as normal. Now here's the do, and this is what we were setting up before. The do is, the, and this is going to be the setup that we want you guys to walk through. And the benefit of this is that if you do this often enough, A, it becomes second nature, which is great. B, you're demonstrating that you understand the whole system. And C, you're going to make fewer mistakes. So general formula for any confidence interval is <clears throat> the point estimate plus or minus your margin of error. Now, the specific formula is this. For a one sample z interval for proportions, you have to have p hat plus or minus your um, z star times your standard deviation of p hat times one minus p hat all over n. And we talked yesterday about you know making sure that you're typing this in correctly so you don't make any mistakes. You're going to then demonstrate everything by showing all the numbers in the formula. And then you're going to calculate it out. So this right here, you don't have to show any more work than getting it here. But again, as we said yesterday, you may want to do it in little parts so you don't make any silly mistakes. So we end up getting the 48% plus or minus 8%. And then finally, my answer is going to be, we have a confidence interval that we're 95% sure of between 40% and 56%. Yay. Mr. Hayes, you said there were four steps. Correct. So here we go. The last step, what haven't we done yet? We said what we wanted. We talked about how we were going to do it. We did it. And like any good essay, we're going to talk about what we did. And I'm going to go ahead and write this one out now just because I think it's worth doing with you guys just because um, the, the stating here is that important. Okay. So to interpret this, we are 95% confident. The interval from 0 0.40 to 0 0.56 captures the true proportion of all immigrants in Madrid. That are male. Now, does this necessarily match up with what was going on in Central America? No. However, there was the same arguments being made in the European community as was being made in um, about what was happening in Central America. So it's worth taking a look at there. All right. So again, what percentage confident? What's the interval? Captures the true proportion of context. Now, what turns out to be happening, and this is what they base the beads on, is the fact that the Immigration Citizen Survey conducted a random sample of migrants in Madrid's comprehensive database. 
257 out of the 583 immigrants sampled were male. Without performing the whole thing above, how would this number here, so how would this change what we saw up above? Okay, a couple of things. First of all, let's check out what the percentage is. That percentage turns out to be 44%. We got 48%. So because the percentage gets small, it gets is the percentage is shifting from again the point estimate, shifting from 48 down to 48 down to 44, that's going to shift the confidence interval a little bit there. The other thing to think about, remember, is what does sample size affect in our formula up here? Which is another reason why writing this down isn't bad. Ooh, if sample size goes up. That means I'm dividing by a larger number. If I'm dividing by a larger number, that means that this answer is going to become smaller. And so that, those are the two things that are going to end up happening. The confidence interval is going to shift to a slightly lower value because the sample proportion is lower than our sample proportion. And because the new interval has a larger sample size, it's going, or excuse me, because the sample size has a larger number of items in the sample, the confidence interval is going to get smaller because obviously the standard deviation is going to get smaller. All right, so that's how you get your four steps to make a confidence interval. State, plan, do, conclude. You're going to see that a lot in what we do. So please go ahead and start committing that to memory while you're loading up the next video so we can go ahead and formalize this and do a couple examples so you can see where things go. All right, so we'll see you soon. Bye.